Hey -o. It is November 25th, 2023. It's like 1215 in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. I got a got a 45 minute drive ahead of me here. Just laugh on the road. <laughs> I I want to make a video here as I travel the highway. And really, I, I'm really torn because I think it's starting to be pretty hilarious. I'm starting to see a lot of videos now, right, online of women, young women, not so young women, I shouldn't say. It's it's usually not 18, 19 through like 26, but it's usually like. 26 through I would say 32 now Th that this is where it becomes interesting uh, you know so for those of you who haven't heard there's a urban dictionary thing called the wall and basically it's this imaginary it's not imaginary, but it's a not, you know, there's no specific time for every woman. So they don't know when it's going to come. But it goes from going from easy mode, absolute easy mode, beauty, looks, shunt, shutting off every male prefrontal cortex that you ever see, the bending over backwards for you, giving you everything you want, attention, money, trips, uh, dating, dinners, dresses, jewelry, and then one day you wake up and it's gone abruptly. And it's like you smacked it to a wall. You're just driving on cruise control and you smack a wall and it stops one day. And so that's the idea. And it could happen to different people at different times and different ages for different reasons. You know, and there's soft walls as well. Flat tires maybe on the highway of life like a divorce or a single mother or tat aggressive tattoos and uh, obesity stuff that will slow down the amount of attention and everything but I'm starting to notice a lot of women now making videos like uh, you know I was just online all the time getting these likes and then I stopped I said I gotta take a break and I felt lonely and alone like I wasn't getting any attention and I realized that I was addicted to social media and it's like oh what every person that's been getting called a misogynist for the past decade has been saying they're just starting to realize now and make videos so Maybe it's true, and maybe they are recognizing this, but it just comes at such a perfect time. Like, the economy's starting to get rough. Women are getting hit first. AI's taking their jobs. And now, all of a sudden, you know, men are working out. they caught on. They've stopped dating. They're going to third world countries. And now all these women are having these magical epiphanies all of a sudden. And they're like, I don't know if you've heard of this interesting idea that no one's ever mentioned to anyone through the history of time. But we shouldn't be dirty whores that post ourselves naked online and have sex with multiple men. And it's like, <laughs> I, I can't. So it, it's scarier to believe that that's true than it is to believe that they're lying. And what I mean by that is, it's scary to think women, these women are so clueless and so oblivious and so in a bubble world that they really are having epiphanies, you know, than it is to be like, yeah, it makes more sense that they would be lying because of the economy uh, or the fact that, you know, they want women as cops, women to get drafted, Women are supposed to be on their own and working, but they can't make any money, and AI is taking their jobs. So there's a lot of reasons now, and they're in debt up to their eyeballs. 
You know what I mean? They have 100K debt. Their job can be replaced by AI. They have 100 partners plus. And now they're like, you know what I'm just figuring out? is women should be in the kitchen ironing and cleaning while men take care of them. <laughs> it's like, uh, really? Now, I'm not saying this is all women. Don't, don't get me wrong. I know there's a large portion of female society that is good. You just don't see the unseen because these good women aren't online posting. They're actually out there living, being good. And they probably met their husbands or boyfriends at a young age and they're still together and they're having a happy life. So you're going to hear the complaints. You know, like when you see a review online, it's usually a negative review. Uh, it's because people go post negative reviews, but when something they expect good and they get upset with that instead of expecting content and getting exciting about happiness and getting sad about or disappointed about um, dissatisfaction situation. I don't know. I, I just find it really, really, really interesting when it, it, it's similar to so is this really happening? That's, that's my question. Are there really all these people in the world I don't believe so. I believe that people, uh, I don't, like, so for instance, you see these, these videos of women with the filters on their photos and making themselves look younger and they're painting themselves into sex clowns where they go from like twos to like these weird eights that look like dolls that shouldn't be attractive, but online, because it's two-dimensional, it seems very attractive, but in person. So they're, they're getting that attention. And what's scary is, there's no way that a man, any man, can give a woman, one woman, more attention than the entire internet. And similar, men, that are consuming large amounts of porn or even any sort of porn. Especially if they're, you know, they're looking at porn that's above their level of capability. So if a guy's a five and he's watching a two dimensional porn star on a video that looks or appears to be an eight with makeup and, her, and everything, the way the lighting and everything's set up and she's having sex or whatever they're they're getting to see that stuff that they wouldn't see in real life and you're rewiring your bottom line standard you know you're setting yourself up for disaster where you're getting dopamine hits and happiness from so when you go out into reality it doesn't seem as enticing as this imaginary world and then on top of that, the amount of bots. Now I'm not even talking about like the porn bots that are fake with you know following two or three people and no one's following them, or the crypto bots, or whatever. I'm talking about I don't know what you want to call them, psyop bots, psyop bots, psyop bots, bots. Um, it's basically decent size accounts with a decent following uh, a media photo of an attractive woman but she's not posting herself on there so it's like yeah because we all know women that are like I just want to be loved for my ideas in funny videos that I post and then they're on other female creators that are posting and, and maybe these are really hideous ugly females but the the, in the bio picture of somebody else's or whatever or men that want to get in they want to cuddle cuddle fish into the women's lives but every they just hype they're just like hype beast hype bots psyop hype bots where they that should be the name of this podcast <laughs> episode psyop hype bots and you know like they're just online and every time a woman posts something like 
triple double fire emojis, 100%, 100% in all red caps, bam, 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 smiley, smiley, and they're juicing each other up all day. Fake juice, you get real juice and fake juice. Um, and then you go out in the world and you're like, look, I, it's me and I'm holding a pumpkin. And people are like, yeah. But why aren't hundreds of you cheering and giving me, <laughs> you go girls. <laughs> it's like, because you're, you're holding a fucking pumpkin. Can you please move, lady? This is McDonald's. You know, so the reason I'm, I'm, I'm concerned with this, and, and this has happened throughout generations. This is nothing new. So, like, when I grew up, there was less makeup, and it came later in life. But these manipulation tactics is, like, you know, so the major one when, when we went out to, like, clubs and stuff is where when people kind of met each other. That was the main where the masses, instead of Tinder, which we had, like, nightclubs. Women would put heels on which makes their legs look longer. They're very uncomfortable, but it makes their legs look longer, makes their calves look tighter, and it props their butt up to make their butt look nicer. So it's an illusion for the eye and length and height. And then she's making herself taller, right? And when she makes herself taller, guys that she's getting something taller than her to approach her. So like if a woman is 5'3 and she wears 3 inch heels, she's 5'6. So now she wants a guy that's at least 5'10 to come talk to her. Because if somebody, if she's 5'3 and a guy that's 5'6, they're on the same level. So even heels back in the day were used to weed out people by height. And the makeup or the long nails, they're like attracting men. Like I can scratch your back with these. They look beautiful. Oh, I'm a, I'm Preston's cat, catch. I don't do manual labor. I don't have garbage. I'm clean. Uh, you know, they're, they're something like that. So I won't get into the whole, you can go look up Jordan Peterson or Stefan Molyneux. If you want to see the science behind the makeup of the red lips and the rosy cheeks and the dark circles under the eyes or whatever, it's all trickery and attempts to turn off the, the male prefrontal cortex so that they're living in an instinctual uh, reactionary brain and then they can manipulate you in a, in a scene. And it's no different to like... It, and some people have uh, I, so you know some people uh, don't like clowns or they have an adversity to clowns like when clowns were originally designed with a big red nose and a white face and people hadn't seen much like back when like they thought a train driving in the movie theater was going to hit them and they were all scared that was absurd and funny and just the look of that was funny and it would put you in a mindset that it's like okay it's time to laugh because we got this clown here, it's it was priming your mind to laugh. So now when women are doing all that stuff, they're priming your mind as if you're going to get laid. And so you're like, okay, well, I gotta don't screw this up because she's in sexual whatever. But she's not really in sexual in, in, in sexual mode. She's just trying to trick you into thinking she is so that you walk on eggshells around her and give her and do whatever you want for her so you don't stretch, stretch that uh, mess that up and then she gets out of sexual mode the equivalent you know for a guy would be you know like if he was if he was saying like uh, he wasn't actually doing it he wasn't taking you on a date or he wasn't buying you things but he was like, hey, we're going to go to this big fancy restaurant. I got reservations. We got to get you in a dress and heels and, and we're going to have to fly out there or whatever. It's going to be a big thing. And it's like, so that's going to, I, I want to do that with you next week. 
And then like a couple days before that happens, he's like, oh, it has to get postponed. So why don't you just come hang out at my house and we'll just uh, hang out and talk tonight. I want to get to know you a little bit better and then we'll do that big, you know, resource absorbing thing later. And then the woman comes over and she sleeps with them, hoping that all those extravagant, and he just keeps dangling the carrot of resources, money, trips, jewelry, and all that stuff. Or, so a commitment for a woman is safety, security, and resource absorption. So if a man is dangling a commitment in front of a woman and never gives it to her, it's no different than a woman dangling her fertility in front of the man and never giving him access to make children. And then the man is saying, look, you can make children for me and then I'll protect and save you and put you in a safe in, in safety. So I'm going to dangle that commitment of calmness. So imagine you think that it's going to be calm and it's right on the brink, but it never gets there. That is going to really mess with a woman's mind. Similar if a man thinks he's on the brink of sex all the time and it never comes, it's going to start messing with his mind. So back to my original thing, it's really curious now that there, that there's a quite a few women now online saying that they've seen the error of the ways. It's like, it used to be the born again Christian woman that would go and do all these devilish things, run around, sinning like crazy, and then the next day she just goes to church and splashes a little water on her forehead. She thinks all are forgiven. Although she never repented or healed for her thing. All, all it is is um, it's a new grift. She's no longer got the sex appeal. So the new grift is the is the purity the pur purity appeal. And I personally have never seen a woman be able to make past six months of a lie, of her lifestyle. And I don't know if it's considered love bombing with a woman. It's more like uh, sanity bombing where they're, hold, they're holding back all their, their abuse and, and traumas and stuff and they're being calm or whatever and then right around the six month mark they just can't hold it back anymore and they end up snapping or doing something crazy and this is where as a man with boundaries you should shut it down it's a red flag but a lot of times men there's like a sunken cost fallacy where you're like god gar gosh darn it I just spent six months of resources, time and energy on this chick, and she's crazy. She's broken, <laughs> and I can't take it back to the manufacturer. So I guess I said enough. So the, here's my question here for people. Well, actually, we'll do two things. The question for men and women in the comments is, do you actually believe that the women that are coming out in these videos have truly, like, with reason, logic, and evidence, seen the error of their ways and they're improving? Or, and I'm not even saying that it's like a manipulative tactic in the fact that it's malicious meaning their old strategy is just not working anymore so they're throwing a different this you know they're cooking this spaghetti a different amount of time and throwing it against the wall and see if it sticks that way so now a bunch of them are trying the tactic of the 
the purity route or I'm not big into social media or I kind of want to be submissive. And, and, and not in a malicious way, in a, in a way that it's like, okay, well, that's not working and my life isn't going good. And I, like, for a while there, I was in debt and I was making money and I could afford, but now as the economy gets worse, it's not, so I got to try something new. And they're just trying a different technique, a different strategy. Like, you know, during, during COVID when they needed work, they all put their buttholes online to see if that would work. And, you know, now that's over. So the economy's getting bad and they tried their buttholes and it didn't work. They tried dating, that's not working. They tried feminism, that's not working. They tried boss girling, girling, that's not working. So now they're like, okay, let me try this. And there's, maybe there is a moral element to it. I don't believe there is. I think it's a, it's a, most of them, it's just a results oriented. They keep trying a new strategy, trying to get the results of a commitment. And they haven't listened to people. So I don't know, you tell me, what do, what do people think? Now, also, as far as women and men, and, we can, and I can ask this however, but men, maybe you won't be able to see this from the inside, and this goes for both genders, but uh, just pornography and how it corrupts your standard of the world and its perception, similar to, to social media, have you tried getting away from social media and pornography and seeing what's happened and see the changes in your life and see if you feel better? See if you're in, in reality more, if it changes your perspective on individuals? Because I mean, for one, if you're a man watching a bunch of pornography or looking at a bunch of social media, it's really gonna give you a, a specific imagery of a woman. And then you're gonna project that onto women in the real world. But if you go out in the real world, there is those people, but there's a lot of people not like that. But even, it, it almost feels like even worse, like a woman also watches pornography. She's gonna go out and she might replicate it, the fact that she thinks that either that's how she needs to act or that guys see her like that. And I've, I've, I've seen this with Whitney Cummings on her own podcast. I mean, she's she's dating some guy now and she's pregnant. But prior to that, she was talking like just nonchalantly. She's like, you know, how you have to like do this, that, the other things, these really graphic things to just even keep a guy because that's what, you know, is in the horns now. And you're like, I don't know. I just felt so sorry for her. It's like you, you're, you're living in a really bad mental place and you boss girl yourself right into being treated like garbage in the name of, of perception I would suggest this now here's my suggestion here's some real life things that I would I could suggest that you do so one I read a book a few years back listen to it on audio you can either listen to it you can read it I prefer listening to it on the go it's free it's a uh, it's written under the style of Alan Carr I believe who basically just breaks down everything about smoking and one book another one everything about drinking this one's done on pornography and you just listen to it and it explains pornography beginning to end and as you just let it settle in, you're just like, yeah, I really love myself and I'm not going to watch pornography anymore. It's, it's not healthy. It's not good for me. It's not good for my relationships and stuff. And can I tell you, physical, 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 the physical aspects, physical, 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 aspects. There we go. I almost, got, I almost, almost got it. Uh, of it are crazy too because when you get off of it you're much more attractive to stuff in real life uh, you get excited easier in real life 
and your brain just rewires pretty quickly. I don't know how long it would take somebody that grew up only on pornography um, or that had an addiction, but for me, somebody that was casual looking at it for a while, for like medicinal pur <laughs> medicinal purposes, it it absolutely changed, and I'll never. I, I don't see myself going back. It's 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 a, a negative experience. So I recommend that to men and women that want to get off pornography. What I also think that could be a useful one is somebody should remake that one for social media. It's media too, but I would think that. Uh, whether you're religious or not, like um, practicing like a Sabbath. What I mean by that is like, so take like um, Hasidic Jews and some hardcore practicing Jewish individuals on Saturday where they practice their Sabbath. They don't do technology and stuff like that. They take a break. And some of them, every time, every night when the lights, when the sun goes down, they turn the electronics off and the power off. I like this. I've done this a couple times. And even if you start by doing it daily, like, okay, I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm not going to go on my phone or do anything digital on my phone. Like, I, I'll do emails and stuff, but I won't do social media until 7 a.m. And then at 7 p.m. I'll get off. And then you can move it to 8, 8 a.m. And then you can move it down to 6, 6 p.m. And reduce that stuff. Or you can try a full day. Like just do no social media and no phone. Um, I've been thinking about this myself. I might just get a second phone. with no data or anything on it that just allows text messaging and maybe put like GPS on it and this on certain days only bring that with me so you I, I'm pretty good at not going on my phone but when I was on vacation I made it a point to like um, I made it a point not to be on my phone all the time I did take some photos and stuff to share but I wasn't going on social media. I wasn't interacting with people all the time. Wasn't listening to music. Um, I carried my phone on me because I needed it for direction, safety, GPS, and stuff like that when I was in the middle of nowhere. But I did notice that my nervous system was much calmer. I was sleeping much deeper and much better according to my mood. Um, with, with only a couple days of changing over where um, it's not like a heavy anxiety but I think what you'll notice is if you pull back from your from your phone that you're getting like micro anxiety from it because you feel this urge to constantly be attached and look like you're getting FOMO and I mean, I, I don't even have, I'm not even doing that for social media. I don't really get the FOMO from, but like, uh, I like to check my businesses and how much money's coming in because <laughs> I'll just be sitting in the poker hall and I can look and there'll be a couple thousand dollars come in. I can check the crypto and some more. And like, it doesn't really change anything that's going on in my life. And I could do it once a week and it'd be the same. Um, and if there's an emergency with the business, I would get an email. But I don't know. I keep. I, I'll just keep looking at it for no reason. It's like the joke with the crypto people, and they're like, Do you, "Are you in it for the long haul? Are you a holder?" And they're like, "Yeah, I'm a holder." And then they're like, "How often do you look at your crypto? Then if you're not going to sell it anytime, anytime soon?" And it's like everybody's like, hey, "I look at it once an hour." <laughs> and like in the in the bull market, it is. It's crazy because you'll. I'll be looking at my crypto portfolio like every hour when the, the thing's getting really volatile and it's like I have, I mean no I'm not going to sell it so why am I looking at it every hour so anyways breaking that habit and getting away from there 
does give you anxiety. So I can't imagine a young female who's getting tens of thousands of likes a day not getting more of a dopamine and serotonin uh, connection to that. And then the basic part of life is going to be so dull because when she goes out, she can't be getting more attention than she is on her phone, which is why when you see these young kids out eating, they're ignoring each other for the phone because the phone's giving them more attention than their friends can, which brings you back to the start of this. It's really dangerous because the internet can give a woman more attention than her husband can. And just pornography alone can give a man more sexual options and entertainment than his wife ever can. And if you're not careful to regulate those things and pull back and take them in control, you'll end up putting them first and the stuff that you claim to really care about and love will come secondary. And by definition, if that's what's happening, if you're ruining your relationships, whether it's at work or personal, for an activity that you do, then you have an abusive addiction to something. It's not like an obsession where there's positive aspects of you sinking yourself into writing a book or whatever. I mean, it's all cost analysis, pros and cons, but I'm saying you're, you're ruining relationships, business, personal, and stuff for entertainment, whether it be pornography or commitment. And really, it's a yearn for communal commitment or for family, which could be solved by having a husband and children that you commit to. And the man wants to spread his lineage, sexual fertility, which could be cured by getting a wife and kids and family and what have you. So, all right, I'm at my destination almost as soon as I go through this light. So I think 32 minutes, that's a pretty good video for everybody. I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Although when this comes out, it'll probably be March, 2024. 2024 is gonna be my year. It's gonna be big, mark my words. These crazy ass videos that I do in my car, we're gonna spread like wildfire. All right, everybody, have a good day.